Welcome into Drew's Daily Diamond for Friday, August 9th, 2024. I am Drew Martin breaking down the slate of games. We got a bunch of them here. Primetime games, West Coast games to get into. Let me know in the comments below what your MLB picks are for today, where you agree, where you disagree. All is welcome. Shout out to all the VIPs in there chiming in each and every day. I'll be in there in the comments below as well throughout the day. Smash that like button if you're liking the content as we have first game up 645 Eastern, 345 p.m. Pacific start nation's capital. It's the L.A. Angels of Anaheim at the Washington Nationals. Mitchell Parker, the lefty going for the Nats. We get the Halos going with Jose Soriano. Total of nine minus 120. That's the Nationals as the home favorite. Angels come in hot straight off of that big underdog win. We were on with the over the Yankees just yesterday. They've actually won four of five, all as underdogs here. We're looking to ride a hot hand in Soriano as well. So not only have they won four of their last five, they've won four straight times. Jose Soriano's taking the bump here. Over the last month, he has a two-flat ERA. If you've been watching the show, we've been on him a bunch. We're not stopping in this situation. We're going to be on the Halos with Soriano as the listed starter as the underdog here, at least in the overnight markets. They're up against Parker. Rookie, not bad numbers. Four ERA, four FIP. This guy that throws 90, 91. Um, it's not necessarily going against him, but it is going against the Nationals. They've lost two straight. They're just three and eight, their last 11. And yesterday's game, they played a day game against the Giants, one that we were involved in. Went to extra innings. There was rain delays. Kind of a tough day to kind of follow here. So it's Friday night action. We get the Angels, think it's wrong team favored, guys. Soriano with a good start, plus 105 is the dog. That's the Angels over the Nationals. Next one up, we'll head to South Florida. Fish Tank for the Miami Marlins, hosting the San Diego Padres. 7-10 Eastern start time here. It's Martin Perez, the lefty, going for the Friars. Edward Cabrera going for the Fish. Eight in the hook being the total, minus 145. That is the Padres as the road favorite. They come in. 12 games over 500, winning five straight. They're actually 14 and two, their last 16. This is the, one of the hottest teams in Major League Baseball right now. Now, they got Perez, the 33 year old Venezuelan, on the hill. Overall metrics, not that great, but he is hot right now. Back to back, solid starts. He's actually only given up one earned run in his last 12 innings of work. I think he's going to have another good start here. He's up against the Marlins lineup. Against lefties, they are dead last in Major League Baseball, just a 623 team OPS against. They only have a 6% walk rate against lefties. They, for whatever reason, don't see it well out of uh, the left hand of starting pitchers. So uh, we're going to look to go against them here. Their starter, Cabrera, 26-year-old Dominican-born pitcher, 6 ERA. He also doesn't go deep into games. He's actually never made it past, what, five and a third innings in any start this season. And it kind of leads me into a, another angle looking to bet with the Marlins. I mean, I'm wearing a Marlins hat here, guys. Lifelong Marlins fan going against them in this uh, situation. And part of the reason is, you know, the Marlins had a bunch of their big starters, big name, talented starters on the shelf this season. They're playing for next year. There's no secret behind it. They made a bunch of trades. A lot of bullpen arms have left and they were talented bullpen arms as well. And the angle is, I think, later innings, the, the Marlins are really going to struggle in, what, the last 35 games of the season. I think, it, you know, as a franchise perspective, it was smart trades for the future of the organization. But here in the down the stretch of the season, I think it could work against them. I think they might be a nice fade. And sure enough, they've lost three of four against the Reds coming into this one. And they gave up 32 runs in that series against uh, the big red machine. Now they're they're playing against a, a better lineup in the Padres. I mean, overall, top five lineup in baseball. Actually, the second best, best lineup against righties. So I think the Padres win this one in possible blowout fashion. I like the uh, if you're a gambler, maybe, you know, the, the, the alt lines minus two and a half, minus three and a half on the Padres. Get that big plus money. But for record keeping purposes, yes, like the Padres on the on the money line. But uh, we'll get the plus price here. Minus one and a half normal run line here. Perez as the listed starter. That's the Padres plus 120 minus the run and a half as the uh, the road team over the Miami Marlins. Next one up, same time, 710 Eastern start time. It's the Houston Astros, Boston Red Sox. Tanner Hawk going on on the hill for Boston. 
Ronaldo Blanco on the hill for the Astros. Total of nine, minus 115. That is the Red Sox at home in Fenway. Number one team in the AL West versus the number three team in the Boston Red Sox in the AL East. But when you look at the records, Boston actually has a better record. So go figure uh, what division in your, you're in actually matters a lot in MLB. But really the breakdown for this one, guys, like the Astros, plus 100. Think this is kind of like a little wrong team favored angle. They got Blanco on the hill, 30-year-old Dominican. He's been great. 121 strikeouts on the season in 124 innings. Only 79 hits given up. He's been tough to hit. And he's up against Tanner Hawk. Good overall numbers for the former first rounder out of Missouri. But rough last three starts. 23 hits, 14 runs, at just 11 to 9 strikeout to walk ratio. I think the Astros bats get to him here. I mean, the Red Sox have dropped each of the last three times. Tanner Hook has taken the hill. So, hey, plus 100, wrong team favored. It's the Astros over the Red Sox in Fenway. All right, let's head a little bit more out west here. We get 840 Eastern, 540 Pacific start time. Heading to mile high in Coors Field. It's Tanner Gordon going for the Colorado Rockies versus Grant Holmes going for the Atlanta Braves. Minus 170, that's Atlanta as the road favorite. 11 in the hook being the total. All right, so two pitchers that at least aren't very well known, at least in my opinion here. But, hey, it brings us to the angle of uh, – Hey, a home dog barking a mile high. The Atlanta Braves come in six games over 500. They are not playing good baseball right now, guys. Losers of five straight games. Over the last six days, they've dropped nine units. They've lost a lot as a favorite. They're laying another price here. And their starter, Holmes, a 28-year-old rookie, he's never pitched in Coors Field. We like fading that situation. And his last time out, he gave up seven hits, only lasting four innings against the Miami Marlins. He's a bullpen guy, now a starter. He's really only in the rotation, in my opinion, because of all the starting pitching injuries for the Braves. So looking to fade Holmes in this one. And he's up against Tanner Gordon here for the Rockies. He's a six-round selection out of Indiana, the former Hoosier, 6'5", 215-pounder. He's one of the Colorado Rockies organization's top prospects. And interestingly enough, he was traded from the Atlanta Braves organization just last year to Colorado. So he's going up against the team that 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 traded him. I think that's a pretty good motivation factor. And look, the Rockies, yes, what, 32 games under 500, but a lot better at home. And sure enough, they're eight and five, their last 13 at home. Big plus price here, guys. We've hit a couple of these big dogs for some for some profits. Let's get another one here. Plus 151, that's the Colorado Rockies, home dog barking in Coors Field. All right, we'll head all the way out west for the last two here. New York Mets, Seattle Mariners, 10-10 Eastern, 7-10 local time start. Jose Quintana, the lefty going for the Metropolitans. We get Miller on the hill for the M's. Minus 120, that's the Mariners as the home favorite. Seven and a hook being the total. We've talked about the Mets a bunch uh, over the last couple shows, guys. It's really their, their scheduling. I mean, they were in New York. They went to L.A., then one game in St. Louis, then three games in Colorado. Now they're on the back half of this stretch in Seattle, not to mention they're going from the thin air of Colorado to a coastal city in Seattle. I don't really like this spot for the Mets. And sure enough, it's starting to show in their bats. Yes, they scored a bunch just last game in Colorado. But overall, they've hit seven straight unders. So for whatever reason, their bats aren't, I think it's due to this travel, at least partially. The problem with just fading the Mets in this one is Quintana's actually a bet on pitcher. Five and two since the start of June. He's a guy I like, you know, changes speeds well. And this Mariners lineup, I mean, they're bottom 10 overall in Major League Baseball. Now, some of the trade deadline moves, I think they are a better offense going forward, but still laying a price here. Miller on the hill for the M's, 25-year-old out of Texas A&M. Solid numbers, 3-6 ERA and FIP. Seattle's also trended under, though, for the season. So we get the Mets, seven straight unders. The Mariners, 10 games under for the full season. I know seven and a half is low. This isn't a best bet by any means, guys. But I wouldn't be surprised if this is 3-2, you know, 2-1, to one, something of that nature. I don't think we get to eight runs. So let's go Pacific Northwest, pitcher's ballpark, two solid pitchers on the hill. 
Let's go under seven and a half Mets and Mariners. One game left, guys. A reminder, if you could comment below, it helps out the algorithm. I'll be in there throughout the day. Smash that like button if you're liking the content. If you're interested in premium picks, check them out. Drew Martin, wagertalk.com. Premium picks up and available. Major League Baseball, college football, NFL. You can check them all out there. So let's head to Southern California for the last game up. 10-10 Eastern, Pittsburgh Pirates, LA Dodgers. Flaherty on the hill for the Dodgers. Minus 180 home favorites. Up against Mitch Keller for the Pirates. Total of eight this one. The Pirates just getting swept at home by the Padres, but in each of the last two, they lost by one run, so I think it kind of sounds a little bit worse than it is. They're two games under 500. What about four or five games out of a wild card spot? Still with a lot to play for here. The thing I like in this situation is Mitch Keller's on the hill. They've won the last five times he's taken the bump. He's 10 and 5. His last, uh, well, for the full season, just a 3-2 ERA, 118 strikeouts, in his last two starts combined, he's only given up three hits. This guy's been tough, tough to hit. And he's up against the Dodgers here, not playing their best baseball. I mean, they're actually getting reeled in right now. If you look at the standings by both the Diamondbacks and the Padres, they're just four and seven, their last 11, losing a bunch of money, you know, usually going off as the favorite. And with Flaherty on the hill, this is only his second start as a Dodger. Remember, he was traded over from the Tigers. He does have a sub three ERA. But he's not a guy that goes very deep in games. So uh, not past the sixth inning since the month of May. It's, he's not necessarily a guy I'm looking to go against. But the Dodgers aren't playing their best baseball. And they're up against a good pitcher in Mitch Keller. Getting plus 154 on the Pirates. Hey, another big dog barking. Let's end it with uh, the big dog, West Coast Late Night. It's Mitch Keller as the listed starter. And it's the Pirates plus 154 over the Dodgers. In recap, we got the Mets and the Mariners under seven in the hook. Colorado Rockies, dog barking at home, plus 151. We get the Astros, plus 100 over the Red Sox. The Padres, minus the run line, plus 120. And the LA Angels of Anaheim, plus 105 over the Nationals. So a lot of plus prices here, guys. Hopefully the dog is barking in that one total to the under. That's going to do it for the Friday show. We'll be back for Saturday's show, guys. So stay tuned for that. Smash that like button, comment below, cash those tickets. Thanks for tuning in.